I guess the only thing that not many people like, I'm like a health freak, like okay, super health, okay. like organic everything. I love cooking like every night that we're home. And Chase has it pretty good. I make dinner, homemade every oh, single night. Oh, that's so <laughs> nice. Oh awesome. my goodness. Hello and welcome to season two and episode 11 of Mics Are Hot. I'm Alanis King and I am joined by Monica Palumbo. Hello, Monica. I'm Good. doing great. You know, I'm in a great mood. I'm having a great time. <laughs> You're always in a great mood. We just have this energy together that That's what works. I like to hear. You know, the sun is finally shining here in North Carolina and what a difference that makes too. Oh my goodness. When you have like the dreary winter for so long and then the sun comes out and you feel the sun on your skin and you're like, this, this is what life was meant Spring to be. Spring is teasing us. Come on. I'm ready to see some flowers, you know? Okay. But also I love spring. And then I go outside and my allergies are so bad and I just sneeze my head off all day. That's fine. I have I have terrible allergies. So, you know, it, it's a blessing and it's also a curse and it's just, it is what it is. But it's good times. <laughs> it's good times. And you know what is also good times? Today, we have Haley Deegan on the show. She's Yay. a talented up and coming race car driver who's running full time in the Xfinity series with AM Racing. And she is so fun to talk to and so interesting. And we get to see all these looks into her life online. And I'm so excited to talk to her about her life today. Yeah, you and me both. She's already made a name for herself at 22 years old. She started racing when she was eight, comes from a racing background, has a huge racing following, um, and is a, a good role model for young girls too that, you know, and new fans that want to get involved in the sport because she really connects with her fans online with her online base but yeah she's already making history and you know we're, we want to celebrate her and honor her as it's women's history month so excited to talk to her in a little bit that is so exciting but first i think we should talk about the weekend that just happened i hear it was really windy there oh my good you know i went <laughs> i went to las vegas motor speedway once when i was a little kid i was like 13 or 14 years old and we went out to las vegas motor speedway and it was so windy that I didn't get a sunburn. I got a wind burn. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. I got a wind burn on my face. Because if you haven't been up in the stands at Vegas on a windy day, you just don't understand. It just will rip your skin apart with how windy it is. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah it's a great track, though. I did oh, see so all fun. of my coworkers that were there. I had the weekend off. Um, but they were just <laughs> literally blown away by the wind and... <laughs> Trying to keep the pre-race stage intact, but you know, they have the, um, one of the cool things about Vegas is they have what's called the neon garage yes. that's open to race fans and you can stand on top of the garage and look in and watch the pit crew guys work and see the drivers and they have the, um, you know, you're in Vegas. So they have the, I can't think of the name, like the dancer girls, the show girls. The yeah, show with girls. The, Thank the, you. Yes. They always have them with the hats on. They're yeah. always there every year. It's super cool. So it looked like they had a lot of fun and you know, it was some exciting racing there too. It was so exciting and some exciting history because Raja Karuth, who is wonderful. He's such a good race car driver and just such a good person won the truck race, like put on such a good show and then won. It was, it was so cool to see him do that. It really was, especially knowing his story. It's really cool knowing he came from iRacing too. He did. He was able to now be this successful driver with, you know, Hendrick behind him, which is really cool to see, um, giving him that extra confidence and, and momentum going into the season. Well, this was a huge confidence booster though, Vegas. Like, oh my good. It was huge. And I do think the iRacing thing is very interesting because we talk sometimes about iRacing and making it big when you started out on your simulator, on your computer, but we don't talk about the logistics of that and how that opens up the sport to so many people who might not have been able to do it because they didn't start when they were five years old right. or they didn't go out and race cars and have the funding to wreck cars. It's such an interesting thing to look at how this affects the future. Because when you think about racing, you have to be able to fund the cars that you're going to wear and tear and wreck. 
And if you can't do that, then it's not really an accessible sport. That's how it's been for many, many years. Whereas football, basketball, soccer, anything else, you can just go kick the ball or throw the ball, right? Racing, you have to be able to wreck a vehicle and put wear and tear on a vehicle and work on that vehicle. That is a huge commitment. And if you're five years old and you say, parents, I want to race, are they really going to spend all of that money for you maybe to not like it in two years? iRacing gives people the ability to pay a subscription fee, get as inexpensive or expensive as they want, and then go practice without any fear. You wreck, you reset. It makes this sport so much more accessible to people who might not have tried it anyway. Yeah. It's just like what Anthony Alfredo was saying when we spoke with him. He said, you know, if you wreck, you just hit a, a reset button, just reset. right? You, you know, but reset. when you're really in the car, when you wreck, like you're out. But yeah, like you said, a lot of these drivers don't have those resources growing up, you know, and when they're little and they want to be a race car driver. Um, interestingly enough, you know, Anthony Alfredo started iRacing. You got Raja Karuth, iRacer, William Byron. William you Byron, know, you know, literally. <laughs> he, um, you know, with the win the other week and, and, and he started iRacing. You know, he didn't get his exactly. racing career until later and then he shot up like a bullet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting. And if you, if you could see, well, if there wasn't a wall right there, you could see our giant sim rig that has three monitors on it, has a huge metal setup with a racing seat in it. We have a direct drive wheel. So a direct drive wheel has a will, lot harsher force you? feedback. Uh, you, you know, I don't use the rig as much um, because I like <laughs> Minesweeper. Um, but my husband is on the rig all the time and I'll get on the rig sometimes. My husband's on the rig all the time and it's one of his favorite activities. He has a very high I rating. He races in the top split pretty much every single oval race. Really? He he is very, very good. He has a 6,000-ish I rating. But we might need a tour of this this simulator at some point on Mike's or Hot. I'll okay. give it to you. I'll, I'll show it I to really you I really want to see this rig. It would be weird if I picked everything up right now, but I'll, I'll show it <laughs> yeah. to you. It's a great rig. It's, we'll do it it's later. really cool. Okay, so we're going to put that on the agenda. We are going to have to do a tour of Alanis' mm -hmm. simulator rig at some point. I've got to see her in this. Uh, but I know we were talking <laughs> about William Byron in Vegas and just crazy things he that were happening day. there, right? With the wind and then a trash bag what with a, a beer hitting byron's car is that what was going on so, so welcome to nascar were, everybody welcome to nascar <laughs> if you if you were watching the broadcast or if you weren't watching the broadcast there was a point in the race where we flipped to william byron's car and his blue car is now entirely black on the front end because he ran into this like industrial sized trash bag and it was just on his car. So of course his temperatures were spiking and he had to come into the pits to remove yeah. it. And I guess there was also a beer can involved. Like <laughs> this happens in NASCAR, but I've never seen a bag that big. Usually it's like a target bag, right? right? It's like a target bag. It's not, it's not a trash bag. That's the size of two trash cans or the size of your large trash can you yeah. put out to the curb. The wind took it away. And then, you know, it lands the, on, what if that was your trash bag? You were the tailgater and you're like, oh, it's on if that was your car. <laughs> it's all your fault, man. <laughs> oh my God. Imagine being that person and just right. knowing that, that you just ruined the day for a million wow. Wow. Maybe that person doesn't like iRacing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, that is so funny. Oh my goodness. And we are now taking Fan questions. We've moved from iRacing and William Byron to asking y'all what you want to know from us. Because we this. figured Monica and I are new to hosting the show. You might want to learn a few things about us, learn what we do, or even just ask us logistical things. So we put out a little call out to say, hey, does anybody have any questions? And we picked a few for this week. If you happen to have questions in the future, we'll post on our Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that and ask y'all for questions. So just chime in and we'll answer them. I think we start off with me because oh, yeah. I have a question for Monica. Oh, Monica okay. talked recently about what she's doing right now, but Monica didn't talk about how she got in to motorsports. And so I want to go back to the beginning. Monica, oh boy. It's a journey. Happened? It's a journey, Lana. So if you ever get NASCAR, you'll notice, well, there is some people say with a certain organization, 
their whole career. Uh, for me, I think this is, oh gosh, my 18th season, 17th season. I don't know. I started in 07. So whatever that was, um, working for, uh, motorsports management international MMI, um, as the, as their host out of their mobile marketing display out in the midway, um, for Bobby Labonte's team at that time. So, I was out there with the fans on a cool little stage, interviewing drivers out there, bringing fans into our display. And I loved it. And, you know, being from Charlotte, North Carolina, you know, we're surrounded by NASCAR, but um, it was nice to be involved in the sport and just seeing how passionate the fans are and how um, family friendly the sport is. And so anyways, after that, I got involved in the Miss Sprint Cup organization for like four years, got to wear one of those cool little fire suits. And it uh, it really opened up the door to so many other jobs in the sport. Um, and then worked for the Speed Channel, was on NASCAR Race Hub with um, Steve Burns and Danielle Trotta. Um, and then I started working for Speed or NASCAR TV so doing all the the big jumbotron stuff, um, and that's what I do now: interviewing drivers and you know having a great it's 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 a pinch me kind of job. I get to talk for a living. People are you know my family doesn't listen to me at home, so I have to go to work and force people <laughs> to listen to me. <laughs> I love when I'm at the track. I love when I'm at the track and I hear something over the loudspeaker, and it's Monica. <laughs> And I'm at the track and I'm like, there's Monica. I hear oh my they're at the clash and they called Monica over to do the victory lane podium celebration just with like, just Monica, come do this. We need you to We're come here, do Monica. this. Get, get up. Okay, here we go. Let's go. All right. Are we ready? Oh, okay. I got, and I just hear, here's Denny Hamlin. I'm like, I know that voice. I, I know that voice. I, I recognize know. I'm trying her. to work on um, lowering my voice and, you know, you work your diaphragm, no, it's great. but you know. When I get excited, okay. it comes out. That's also that's also something I have worked on because I find that people do want to listen to lower voices, but I get excited. It's not my fault I get excited. And then I have to go down really right here because I don't want to weird Spirit people away. out with my voice. <laughs> there, have them go, oh my gosh. Yeah, I've actually even taken a class on all that kind of stuff, how to work with your, the tonality of your voice it. and all that kind of stuff. Oh, the tonality of your voice is amazing. I just, I know when I hear it, I know that's Monica. That's my buddy. <laughs> that's so that's funny. That's my podcast host. <laughs> I love it. That's my girl. <laughs> that's um, my girl. <laughs> well, let's dive into these fan questions. Are you ready? Fan questions. I'm so ready. Above the yellow line. This is Taylor Kitchen. I absolutely love Taylor. And Taylor said... Any tips on how to make travel for work easier, especially in the motorsports industry? And Monica, do you want to go first and then I'll go? Sure. I know for me, everything is travel size as far as, well, being a female, you know, we need all like the little <laughs> lotions and hair stuff. And so everything is travel size. I never check a bag ever. Um, really? I, need, I never, ever, even if it's for champions weekend out in Phoenix, which I'm there for like six days. I'll, I'll cram so many things into a little carry on and I have every day marked out with what I'm wearing. Um, wow. Yes. That's I actually to, so interesting. Yes. Yeah. Cause I don't, uh, you know, there has been a time where my luggage has gotten lost and it's mm -hmm. a miserable work weekend trying to, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes like, you know, for a Friday I'm flying into Phoenix and I have to go straight to the track for work. You know, I don't have time to go buy an outfit for the next day. So <laughs> everything is travel size and, you know, I roll my jeans up real tight. Um, always have like, even like a mini umbrella in my book bag, just stuff like that. Always an umbrella, always, a always an umbrella, little hairbrush and toothbrush and all the necessities that, you know, if you have a 14 hour day at the track, you're covered. So. No, I, I love that. And because I brought my husband and my brother-in-law to the clash, they don't, my husband has one umbrella and it's huge. It's too big for any suitcase. <laughs> it's like ever. the golfer size umbrella. Yes, it is. It is. And it won't even fit in my biggest suitcase. And so I had to, I have multiple mini umbrellas. So I had to pack my mini umbrellas and then I text my brother-in-law and I say, bring an umbrella. And he says, I don't have an umbrella. And I'm like, you're 32. <laughs> And you don't how have do you an not, umbrella? How do you not have an umbrella? What? And so I brought him an umbrella too. And I was like, okay, well, three umbrellas for the class in go. my suitcase. So 
my tips for traveling, I actually do usually check a bag, but that's because I have to bring my own camera equipment usually when I work. Well, that so makes sense, yeah. The camera equipment has to be carry on so it doesn't get lost or broken or anything like that. I, my recommendation is pick an airline and pick a brand of gas station or a couple of brands of gas station and sign up for the rewards oh. and do that because I have the American Airlines frequent flyer program. I only fly American. And because I only fly American, I'm at that status level where I can upgrade every single flight to main cabin extra. And I get my extra leg room. And on my small flight from where I live to the nearest big airport, I can usually be in first. And they bring you cranberry juice and vodka <laughs> and pretzels and you get leg room and it's amazing. And I you also feel my... fancy. You feel fancy exactly. there. You feel fancy. And then I always stop at 7-Eleven when I'm getting like gas or anything like that. Or I have a couple of others, but mainly 7-Eleven because I get rewards at 7-Eleven and then the airport 7-Eleven honors those rewards. So I get free food at the airport. Okay. So you. you just, you see, and when you're traveling for fun, you don't have to pay for food at the airport. That's what I recommend. I also keep a backpack that has all my necessities in it and I don't swap those out. So like if my luggage does get lost, I have a toothbrush. I have all the stuff I need in my backpack and that travels with me. So yeah, that's those smart. are my recommendations. Oh, another thing. And then we can move on real quick. I have, I always carry like a gallon size Ziploc bag. This must be the mom and me too though. And I put all my snacks in there because the airport is so expensive. I don't want to pay $5 for a bag of pretzels. Okay. This question comes from Adam. Let me rise. Favorite motorsports track in the world. Alanis. Oh my you goodness. You have a favorite. Okay. So <laughs> this is so funny. My gut says Indianapolis Raceway Park <laughs> because I love watching IRP, but to drive, I absolutely love Circuit of the Americas. Obviously I haven't driven every track ever, but I love driving Circuit of the Americas. I love the technicality of it. I love the harsh braking zones, the S's, the elevation changes. It's just a very enjoyable track to drive. Mm -hmm. So if I get to pick a track to drive, I'm going to drive Coda. What about That's you, Monica? Cool, you've been able to drive that. So I've never oh, ever been behind the wheel and driven on a track. The only let's thing is get Charlotte. You in one. I know Charlotte Motor Speedway. They have like the Christmas lights, and I've driven my car up on the banking there. And I'm like, yeah, this is cool. Wow, you know, we're like, so oh. <laughs> I love that. Um, I love that. But you know, I've really only been to NASCAR tracks. I love Talladega. Absolutely mm. love it. I just think it's a fast track there's generally new winners there the fan experience is you just you feel like you're at a nascar race um there are so many in bristol you walk into bristol the coliseum and you get goosebumps it's literally like one of those experiences of ah. um and you can see everything there's not a bad seat in the house you can you can look down and you just feel like you're so involved in the racing there. So there's a very two different tracks, but one, both of them I highly recommend people going to. We have one more question this week from Sir Tom a lot. Hello, Sir Tom a lot. I'm new to NASCAR. Who is a good first time favorite driver slash team? I talk about my favorites all the time. Monica on the spot. Let's go. Yeah. I would say track house racing is a great team Love for them. a new fan. They are very involved, um, with social media. They connect with their fans on a whole different, in a whole different way. They really let you in not only just with the driver, but with the pit crews, the pit crews are very involved in their social media. So you get to really know them. They feel like a family over there and they've got all great driver lineup over there. I mean, and Ross Chastain, he's a great driver to be rooting for, for a new fan. I feel like even though he's, he's not a newer driver, he's actually been involved in the sport for years, but I feel like he's finally had a breakthrough career in these mm -hmm. past few years. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like that's a good team driver combo to root for, Just for the new fan. What about you? Justin Marks, who is the owner of that team and the founder of that team is 
so wonderful. He has yeah. so many good marketing ideas and he always enacts them. When you see something cool happening in the NASCAR garage, like the little lounge areas and stuff, usually Justin Marks did that first and everybody else is doing it after because Justin yeah. has such good ideas. And also Justin's just so nice and willing to hear people's ideas. There are people who you feel like you can reach out to. You can like text or call and people you feel like you can't. Justin Marks, I will text him sometimes just because I'm driving a car and like I was driving a really fancy Porsche 911 the other day and I sent him a picture of it and I said, I just thought you would appreciate this. And we talked for like half an hour about Porsche 911. <laughs> like he just, That's awesome. just started talking about cars, right? Because Justin Marks loves cars, just like I love cars. And so he's one of those people who's very accessible. So me, I am very open about who I cheer for all the time, which I cheer for everybody, <laughs> but I really, really like Tyler Reddick. He is my Cup Series driver. He is my buddy. Um, when I was deciding to pick drivers as an adult, because when I was a kid, I was a huge Kyle Busch fan. I still am. Kyle Busch is amazing. He's one of those people you can like text or call and he texts or calls you back, right? Amazing guy. And I'm still a big fan of him. But I had this period when I started working in motorsports where I was like, I have to be serious and I can't be a fan of people. <laughs> and then I was like, nah, I'm going to be a fan of people again. And I picked Tyler Reddick because I just yeah, thought he was he was very sweet. He was very talented. And I said, hey, buddy, let's go to Medieval Times together. And like, I had, I had not met Tyler at this point, aside from <laughs> I saw him in line for a porta potty one time at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And I ran up and I said, Tyler, I know you're in line for the bathroom. I'm really sorry, but I'm a big fan. I adore you. And he was like, it's okay. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. And then the next thing we know, we're picking him up to go to medieval times. So that is awesome. Yeah. He's super down to earth and what a talented driver too. It was nice seeing him battle it out in Vegas too. Yeah, he's a good one to root for. But we should get to the main topic of the show, which is what? rising stars. Yeah, uh, there's so many rising stars this season. Um, speaking of, we're going to be talking to Haley Deegan here in a little bit. You know, Raja Karuth, he's a rising star. We just saw him get a win this past weekend in Vegas. Zane Smith, there's, there's several drivers that have made their cup debut and a full-time cup ride this year mm -hmm. that are rising stars. I loved that Carson Hosevar posted like a few days ago that he went to get his license renewed and he put a 77 on it, his car number, and they accepted it. Yeah. <laughs> so his driver's license now says Carson Hosevar 77. I, I love it. He wonderful. got away with it. He's, it's he a, it's truly it. official. It's legal now. <laughs> It's his legal name. It's Carson <laughs> Hose of R77. Oh, um, like, there are so many good people to watch and root for, especially as they get older, because, you know, a lot of good drivers are getting older. They're in their late 30s, early 40s. You have to start looking at this new crop of people and deciding who you're going to root for for the next 20 years, right? Yeah. And so it's just it's nice to pay attention to them and see people have success like Raja, like Haley, Zane, Carson, all of them. I will have to say, I've been keeping my eye on Sammy Smith. I have watched him since like the ARCA days and seeing him come up and, you know, he's one of those guys that quietly has risen. Like, you know, the cream rises to the top. He has quietly made his way to the top. One of the most respectful guys in any interview I've had with him. Um, and it's been so cool to watch him um, and where he started, where he's at, how fast he's gotten there, how humble he is. But honestly, you've got to keep your eye on Sammy Smith. He is so talented. He He's going to, if not one win this season, he's going to, get a few, I think. And if anybody has shown us that they can transition upward very quickly, it's Jesse Love. Wow. Yeah. Jesse Love comes <laughs> off of Arca and just absolutely starts smoking people at the plate I tracks. Mean, Incredible performance. Yeah. Like, starting on the pole, wow. your first Daytona, that was unreal. Wow. So there is so much to look out for. And we want to introduce you to one of them today, who is Haley Deegan, who drives the number 15 car for AM Racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And now we are joined by Haley Deegan. Hi. How are you guys? 
We're doing all right. We're having some technical difficulties, but we're getting better at it. It's okay. I understand. I'm not as tech savvy as you think. How's it going for you? Good. Just busy as ever. Season starting. It's a whirlwind of just a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I bet. And we were actually wondering how the season is going. How are you feeling about the new car? You're at the beginning of a multi-year deal with AM Racing. How's it been so far? And what are your expectations for the team? Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to the car, like I love the Xfinity cars. They're so much fun to drive. Um, the competition's a little bit different. And so uh, I've had a blast thus far. Daytona, Atlanta didn't go great. Daytona, um, we ended up getting in one of the first wrecks that happened. So something that was kind of out of my control got pushed into it. So uh, the team was super understanding with that. Then Atlanta, we kind of gambled a little bit. In Atlanta, I was still kind of feeling it out. Like, okay, uh, trying to get comfortable a little bit. And I think with Atlanta, like I've never, I've never been super comfortable comfortable there. It's not been one of my best tracks. So I kind of knew that going into it. Um, but we ended up running out of fuel about two laps short to the finish, which oh, so did it just about half. Yeah. Oh. So did just about half the field. So yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And of course, like Daytona, there's always the big one, right? And it's inevitable. And when you get caught up in that, there's there's really nothing you can do. Um, so if you guys are just joining us, we're hanging out with the number 15 Xfinity driver, Haley Deegan. Um, and I saw in a previous interview that you said that you like to focus on the positives, right? Mm -hmm. um, so kicking off the season, what are some of the positives that have stood out to you so far? I know we're early on. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of positives, even just how me and my team have bonded, how me and my crew chief have bonded. I think we have a really great dynamic. Um, the team is super welcoming and has been like super inviting and just made me super comfortable, which is really nice and um, something that I know a lot of drivers could struggle with going to a new team. So that's always on your mind when you're signing with a new team. You're like, man, am I going to mesh well with everybody? And oh, it's been great. Like, I honestly couldn't have asked for much better. That is awesome. And I know um, when you started off your career, well, in the national series, it was during COVID times, right? We couldn't mm -hmm. practice. We couldn't qualify. We couldn't do all these things. And we were able to interview um, Anthony Alfredo a few weeks ago. And that's when he started too. And he was talking about the challenges during that time and how hard it was because there were other drivers that were able to have a bigger notebook, right? And then you get mm -hmm. behind the wheel for the first time and you're having to learn right when the race starts pretty much how did you overcome those challenges i don't think i ever did <laughs> i think that's yeah, one of the things yeah. that like i don't think there's many people that like loved it not having practice or qualifying like that's a part of racing that's a part of how you get better in racing like what other sport goes out there and just plays games without practice like it's there's no other sport that does that so that was something that was a little bit challenging for me especially that was at the time when I was going from Arca to trucks so uh, at that time it was it was tough because I trucks are a handful as it is and then on yeah. top of that having to learn every single new track like I think previously in the Arca stuff like there was only like I could name them all on one hand of the tracks that I've been to. So uh, a lot of it was so new for me. The competition was new for me. The truck was new. Um, and just getting comfortable on each track was was very hard. And so I think it's something that, like, definitely put a little bit of, like, a halt in my development. Like, it definitely didn't help it. Like, I can assure you that. <laughs> but um, I think when it comes down to it, like, I've had to overcome those things and try to gain as much knowledge, that, knowledge as I can. And even to this day, there's only 25 minutes of practice at most tracks. Yeah. And like Atlanta, like I've never been to Atlanta in an Xfinity car before. I go out there and just, okay, you've got to hold it wide open and qualifying. Hopefully nothing weird happens with your car. Hopefully everything's just works perfect and just hold it wide <laughs> open and qualifying. Mm -hmm. So it's like, right. it's tough things like that, that like you get faced with as like a rookie in a series that not many people, I feel like put themselves in your shoes to realize. Yeah. Totally. And I really like how honest you are about the lack of practice and the mm -hmm. logistics of that. And I actually wanted to ask you more about that. What are you doing to prepare for these tracks? Because you don't really have that practice time you need. And also, what is it like when you're in the car and you're about to go out there and qualify? Are you focused on speed? Are you focused on keeping the car in one piece? Where is your head at? 
I mean, I think when it comes down to keeping the car in one piece, that's when you're someone who's trying to go out there and do the best you possibly can. That's kind of the least of your worries. You're mostly yeah. just going out there and trying to go as fast as you can and uh, do everything perfect. So and try to make the most speed as you can. But when it comes down to the practicing side of things, which I'm super fortunate of, is I get to go to the Ford simulator every single week. So getting that seat time there to at least visualize everything, kind of see the changes that you'll be making. This is a new car for me. So I want to know how some of the changes affect it, what changes I like it certain tracks which ones I don't which things that like we can really hit on and like wow that was a lot faster or this just didn't feel right or work good so those are some of the things that we run through on the Ford simulator but still when it comes to the simulator stuff I think it's super super helpful for setup wise but I think mm-hmm. as a driver still going out there there's no fear factor in it you can go out there and you can yeah kill the wall 10 times in a simulator and you hit the reset button. There's no reset Mm -hmm. button when you get to the track. So that's something that's a little bit different. Um, But still having that simulator time is, is huge. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so interesting. And I'm very curious, do you have an internal monologue when you're about to qualify or are you just like, is everything silent and you're just going to go? I mean, I kind of have like a mental checklist and I think it's kind of a checklist okay. I write down beforehand of like, okay, uh, when you go back and watch SMT and all this footage in car footage and you see exactly what this person's doing, who was good in qualifying here, exactly what worked, what didn't work, mistakes people made. It could be a little bump on the track. And it's funny, like I was talking to Justin Allgaier and um, Riley Herbst before we went out for qualifying at Atlanta. And uh, Justin told me, he's like, hey, like when you get up to speed, like at the fence, like there's a pretty big bump in to turn three that you need to watch out for it like I would have never known that yeah, unless yeah. you told me that I'm like that's good to know thank you yeah. and so yeah. there are things that like when you don't have that notebook and you're a rookie in something that you kind of just have to build that as you go um I know the season just got started but you and Natalie Decker have already made a little bit of history um with the Daytona 500 two female drivers kicking off the Xfinity series and that hasn't happened since 2014 So how nice is it for you to have another female driver out there? I mean, for me, I've always just been so focused on myself and my racing. My dad didn't treat me different growing up in racing. I was treated as one of the guys and I went out there to go win just like everyone else was out there. So like, I don't know, I don't really look at it as like the girl side of things just because like if I did like, um, I'm the only girl racing Xfinity full time. And like, those are things that like you look at and you're like, okay, that's cool. But that doesn't make your career. What makes your career is how you do. You talked earlier about how the trucks are a little bit of a handful. And I'm really, really curious from a driving perspective, you now have a few Xfinity races that you've done compared to a lot of truck races. What are the differences between the truck and the Xfinity car? What's more suited to your driving style and what's less suited to it? Yeah, I mean, I think the trucks, anyone can agree that that race trucks and anything else that the trucks are super unstable. They're some of the weirdest, weirdest cars I've ever, trucks I've ever driven in my entire <laughs> life. So uh, it's very different because of how aero dependent they are. The truck bodies, that's that's why they're so different is because they are trucks, they're not cars. And so uh, the bed of the trucks, and if you look how they're built, the front of them is a square and then you go to the mm-hmm. rear end and they're always angled out very far. So what that does is make it so these trucks are so mechanically set up to be free because you're relying on the air to hold you. And when that happens, when you're running two, three wide with people, you're in the middle on a mile and a half, that takes the air off your right side. You lose that pocket of air that you have that's holding you into the track. And so because of that, it makes it very, very difficult, I feel like, for them to drive on their own or when you're racing and stuff next to people and uh, knowing when it's going to step out and get super free on you. And they're so momentum based that a lot of the mile and a half you go to, you're wide open for a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. And so it's just you're able to kind of mess with people a lot. Like you can kind of decide on mile and a half. Like if someone's not that much faster than you just a little bit like you can kind of screw them pretty bad a mile and a half just by taking their air and (laughs) knowing that game it just it makes it totally different so i know the xfinity stuff uh it has a lot less downforce compared to the truck it's a lot less affected by air it still is there still is significant things that you do feel in the xfinity car but i feel like it's a fraction of what the trucks were yeah. Oh, I was going to ask about how the skew feels differently in the truck versus the Xfinity car, and you just went straight into it. So <laughs> yeah. that was amazing. I commend you. There is no way I could do that. I did a ride along <laughs> once, and I the G Force held me down those three laps around, and I kissed the ground <laughs> when I got out. I commend you for doing what Hon- you do. Honestly, Monica, riding is a lot scarier than driving. <laughs> I agree. I agree. 
It's yeah, so I'm much scarier. Passenger. I'm yeah, a terrible passenger. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I could do it. And I know we talked on um, this topic about being a female driver a little bit ago, but I want to know, is it added pressure on you or do you put added pressure on yourself because you are one of the only female drivers out there? Or is it something you're just so used to because you have been racing since you were like, what, eight years old? Yeah, for a long time. So I'm 22 now, but I think the pressure has always been there. I think you just kind of get used to it. Like pressure is a blessing in certain situations. And I think that in my case, I've gotten a lot of great opportunities that come with a lot of pressure, especially these opportunity that I have with AM racing. So I think that when it comes down to it, like it's a blessing, you have to take advantage of it and you have to do everything in your power because you got the opportunity for a reason. And so going out there and just trying to perform your best is the biggest thing. Oh, totally. And on a similar level of that, like going out and showing that you belong there, you're a really major online brand and persona. So my question, my first question about this is how do you juggle competing in a sport, documenting your life (laughs) and also living your life? Yeah, I think it all goes hand in hand. I think uh, the living my life comes with documenting it. You're already kind of doing it. So why not film it, be able to post it online and show people what it's really like. Uh, And then balancing it all out. It is tough. It does take a lot of time. But in my mind, racing comes first, no matter what. Everything else will continue to grow if I am racing at a competitive level and I am doing good. So uh, that goes with YouTube. That goes with uh, getting sponsors. That goes with using social media to get sponsors. So it all ties hand in hand. As much as they're so different and two completely different things, they align so much with each other when it comes to my life. Because without the social media following I have, that sponsor attraction wouldn't be there. And so uh, that honestly helps my life out a lot by having that social media following. But I have that social media following because I've documented all my racing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, (laughs) it's kind of funny. Like, I feel like I wouldn't be big on social media if it wasn't for racing. But also I wouldn't be, I feel like having some of the opportunities in racing if I didn't have uh, my brand that I've grown and been able to document everything and gain that following. My follow-up to that is there was an adjustment period for me, probably like six or seven years ago. And I'm sure most people have this adjustment period when your life and your work becomes a comment section Mm -hmm. (laughs) because people can be really mean off of knowing very little about you. Did you also have that adjustment period? And how do you cope with those things now? Not really, because I've my dad grew up kind of in the limelight yep. when it comes to the two wheel side of motorsports, and I've always been kind of used to it. Like he didn't have like I don't know the best reputation, and so not everyone loved him, which <laughs> a lot of people did love him, but a lot of people also didn't. So, like obviously that's going to be there no matter what. And I kind of grew up, I grew up in the racing world. I grew up around social media, so I've always been kind of used to it. But quite frankly, I don't really look at any of it. Like I post my stuff up and I don't go through the comments like really at all. Like it's very rarely that I do. Like all people send me like, hey, did you see this comment? And I'm like, honestly, if that person came up to me and said that stuff to my face, I wouldn't give them the time of day. Also, they won't why, either. <laughs> why are you taking people's opinions who are not at your level? That's like taking advice from someone that's below you that works at a lower level than you. Who who does that? You take advice from people who are more successful than you or kind of at your same level. So like if some famous driver, super successful driver was the one making those ne- negative comments, it's probably going to affect me a lot more than someone who has literally never raced in their entire life. And as you know, probably the fastest they've ever gone is 80 on the freeway. <laughs> Yeah. Monica's like, I love this. I love this. You're absolutely right. I mean, and that's how you have to keep your mental game strong. I mean, yeah, you don't need to look at these negative comments and think twice about it. So I'm, I'm no, so glad. No, it doesn't, doesn't affect me yeah. one bit. Like at the end no, of the day. No, that is nope. great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. No, it seems like you do enjoy the social media presence and your videos. I love watching them. But I'm curious too, do you keep some things private, right? Some People or influencers put everything out there. Do you at least keep some things private? I mean, there's not many private sides of my life, um, (laughs) quite frankly. Uh, Love that. I just, because all my life is, is racing. Like I race every single weekend. I'm doing stuff involved with racing every single day of the week. So there's like (laughs) a few things I can't show. Like I can't show the Ford Sim. So like... (laughs) I guess that's yeah. one of them, but, but like even my, my relationship, like me and Chase, my fiance, 
uh, he works all on the social media side, on the merchandise side, helping me out. And uh, he does a lot of that work. And so he's the one always behind the camera or in the in the camera shot. And I think that's something that like people see our relationship and our relationship on camera is exactly how it is off camera. Like we're where we work great together and we do a lot of fun things together and he's at all of my races and super involved with it and it's pretty funny because like every crew chief that i've had i feel like chase builds just as strong a relationship <laughs> if not stronger with my crew chiefs just because they have like the exact same mindset and they want to see me succeed just as much as i do i think that is great and i'm sure he does a great job too with being a videographer because he's a racer himself right so he probably kind of mm -hmm. knows you know what you want to oh, put yeah, he knows there. a lot. He's smart, yeah. super, super smart. Even like back when he was racing in the Arca stuff, he was the one working on a lot of his cars, which I didn't really do a whole lot of that. So he's the one that kind of breaks things down for me a little bit. And honestly, he's taught me so much about cars and how the dynamics of them work. Because for me, looking on the outside, like I can be told something, but like why, when you change that one thing, does this happen? Like explain to me why that happens. And so I feel like he's definitely built up my knowledge base and understanding of how these cars work. Oh, I love that. My husband also films all my stuff. <laughs> and we work on our cars good. together. Works yeah. yeah, it works great. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I know you do such a great job connecting with the fans. And I go to a lot of races and I see a lot of Haley Deegan gear. And when you get introduced during driver introductions, like, you know, the, the crowd roars. Do you feel that support when you're there at the track? For sure. Uh, I, and it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes, like sometimes when yeah. you're trying to get in the car and you have a few people screaming at you. So uh, yeah. it definitely, but I'm so thankful for it. Like I'm able to do what I do because of all the support and the fans that I have and the following that I have. So I think it's something that like, I definitely appreciate the ones that are positive. As you can tell, yeah. the negative comments I don't really care about. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. I... I don't have a lot of negative in person, but I went to a car meet once and a guy was talking to my husband and I went up and I said, hi, I'm Alanis. And the guy said, I know who you are and I don't like you. And I was like, okay, yeah. I probably wouldn't like you either. Yeah, and then yeah. we had a conversation and at the end of it, he was like, you know, I kind of like you now. And I was like, great. Good that's to know. A, that's okay. some honesty. That's some honesty. Yeah. Yeah. It was honest. Yeah. You know, it was honest and brave. <laughs> yeah, that is brave. That is. <laughs> so we have a few more long form questions, but mm -hmm. we like to put a little rapid fire thing here yeah. in the middle where we just ask you about yourself. So mm -hmm. our first rapid fire question is who do you text the most? Probably Chase. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yep. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> what is your go-to lazy dinner? Go-to lazy dinner would be cereal. Oh, I love cereal <laughs> yeah, for dinner. Some, mm. I had some for lunch mm. today, so... Uh, me too. I had zero for lunch too. <laughs> Super healthy. Let me tell you. Can you, can you recall going more viral than normal online and what it was? I would say I did one video with, um, her name's Dixie D'Amelio. She was a big TikToker. Uh -huh. Um, I yeah. did one video with her and it got like 50 million views. So I'd say like, that was, what? that was probably the one. Yeah. What were y'all doing? Was, yeah. was that when they came to the race? They came, no, they came, um, to my house and oh, yeah, wow. back when I lived in California and she, she drove my Mustang and stuff. She kind of killed the clutch in it. I had to get a new clutch. Oh, no. oh. Yeah. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, yeah. I we never sold told her. her that. I never told her that. So. <laughs> we sold one of our cars and four hours later, the person who bought it said, do you have an extra clutch? And we were like, no. You're like, yeah, I just no. have one laying around. No, yeah, we don't right. have a clutch laying around. Oh, that's so bad. I'm so sorry. That hurts. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's what okay. is your favorite way to work out? Favorite way to work out? Um, I love weightlifting but lately mm -hmm. i've been in like my older person era of being on the <laughs> elliptical i love, love the elliptical it's like a newfound love in the gym <laughs> love yeah. that oh it my works, goodness it works the booty i love it <laughs> <laughs> do you watch shows one episode at a time or do you binge whole seasons uh i binge as much as i can in one night till about 2 3 a.m yeah uh huh. Yeah, Monica, do you do you do one episode at a time or seasons? No. I, well, it depends on the night. But yeah, no, I I break it up like three in a night. You know. Yeah, yeah. I say like we're watching. Me and Chase right now are watching Suits, 
And like oh, I've okay. seen it, I've seen it all over Netflix, and I'm like, oh, a few people have suggested it. And so we just started it, and it's eight seasons. Like most of the stuff we watch is like maybe a season or two, and we'll yeah. finish like two or three days. And so now, like this one's eight seasons, and so we're still we're pretty deep into it. It's literally nice. something to do. I remember there was this transition period when we were all watching we were all watching subscription services, but I had one show that I still watched weekly and it was supernatural and it was so refreshing to watch it once a week. Oh my gosh. And now I don't have that anymore. Uh, we were watching a show on, I forget what it was, what network it was on, but it was called found. And it was like the mm -hmm. same thing where it was like one episode a week. And I have never watched TV shows like that, where it's one episode a week. Like I've always been a big movie person. Mm -hmm. And so we're watching this. I'm like, this is the most frustrating thing ever. Yeah, because like, it stops. I, I hate it. Like it I want to watch it all right now. Like, I <laughs> you're, want you're more, I want more. Oh, yeah. You're so right. But there was just something like nostalgic for me. It just it brought me <laughs> back to childhood. And I just, oh, speaking of Netflix, do you have your own account or do you use someone else's? I think, well, I... I'm on chases. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so kind of a mix. Okay. Yeah. What object do you misplace or lose the most? Ooh, that I misplace or lose. It's my phone charger. hundred percent. Oh, never phone, phone charger is a bad that one. That is my husband. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't uh -huh. know. I'm pretty good at keeping things together. Like I carry okay. a bag. I carry a backpack around everywhere. Like I don't Me have too. like a really a purse unless like, mm -hmm. I have my purse, like my little purse inside my backpack, but like I keep my computer, my computer charger, phone charger, I keep everything in that backpack. And so Ooh. I really never, never lose. Oh, I, my credential, my parking pass credential to the NASCAR races. Oh, I, this, oh, no. this is the furthest I've ever made it in the year. I usually lose it by the second race. Last year it was in Daytona. Oh, I literally left so it bad. on the plane home and the little seat pocket coming oh, home from Daytona. Oh, that's so bad. No, that hurts. Yeah. Okay. But do people actually stop you for a credential at the track? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm wearing oh, regular I'm... street clothes. So okay. like, and yeah. a lot of the yeah. times, most of the employees that work at race checks, they're brought in for that weekend. Yeah. And so they're not right. actually people there that are traveling with the NASCAR series. And so it's not like they would just casually know. So I kind of have to like explain to them and stuff. <laughs> so it makes it a little I'm difficult. I'm a driver. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm in the car. Okay. That was our last rapid fire question, but yeah. I came up with another one. And my last one is, are you a phone dropper or are you not a phone dropper? I'm a phone dropper. I drop it every day. No. Chase is a phone dropper though. I feel like every mm -hmm. single person, you can be divided into two groups. Yeah. You either drop mm -hmm. your phone or you don't. And I yeah. drop my phone all the time. Monica, mm -hmm. do you drop your phone? Only in bed when I'm looking up and it falls on my face. <laughs> I, learned, I, learned. I swear my nose is broke <laughs> twice from doing that. Because I look at old pictures of like, even like three years ago. And I'm like, is my nose bigger? I'm like, and then I remember I dropped my phone on it twice. Like, to be fair I though, to be fair reason. though, your nose and ears never stop growing. Yes, so. but I'm like, it could have grown that much. And like, I don't That's know. That's so fun. I don't need to know that fact. So now I'm like on my side. Now I'm like, no. I know I've got... I got the big, I got the big bump in my nose too. So we're good. It's just going to get bigger. It's all good. <laughs> okay. Well, now let's talk about, I know you um, grew up in California. Your dad mm -hmm. raced, your brother Hayden races now, I believe. Yep. And mm -hmm. of course you're racing, but I want to know how different the cultures are, right? I mean, I lived in the, on the West coast for a few years in California. Um, mm -hmm. But for you, how different are the racing cultures? So completely different, completely. I think just all around like it's very very different the moto side i feel like everyone's very tight very close-knit the fans are different um like the you can't really tell apart like the fans from the crew guys because they all have the same style and it's a very west coast mm -hmm. style kind of like the yeah. style i have the ch style chase has now i feel like it does me <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's when you when you're around that moto scene it has a specific look it's like a skater look but like the moto side and so I think there's some differences on that side. And, and I feel like it goes along with the West Coast and the East Coast style of just culture in general. Yeah, totally. And is there anyone you really enjoy racing against or anyone in the Cup Series whose driving style you really look up to? I mean, it's hard because every driver in the Cup Series is so good. Like at the mm -hmm. end of the day, they're so good at what they do. And mm -hmm. they they all have a little bit, I guess, different style, but it's not that different. Like when you're good, you're just good. Like at the end of the day. So, uh, when it comes to racing on any, I guess the 
the best person I've ever raced around in the truck series. And I've talked about this with Chase before too. And we're kind of friends too. And I was like, dude, every time I race around Raja, he's awesome to race around. Like he's the type of person to know, like, Hey, if I'm faster, he'll wave me by. He won't like race, like race me super hard or anything like that yeah. when he knows like, Hey, by and vice versa like ever since he did that to me and I was like wow like that's the first person that's ever done that to me and yeah. now like if, back when I was racing trucks I was like okay if he's that much faster than me like hey wave him by and like those are things I think comes with respect and then there's certain people that like yeah, you could like I could be faster they could be behind me and they'll try to take me out like it's <laughs> it's different with every single driver but Roger's one of the most in my opinion, when I race against him, respectful drivers to race around. Yeah. Oh, I love Raja. Raja I is too. Just, he's, Raja he's is such, such a, nice a good person. person. Yeah. My neighbor, my neighbor did an internship with NASCAR and I asked who she liked as a driver. And she said, I really like Raja. And I was like, well, then let me just hit up Raja and he can send you a message. And she was like, really? And I was like, yeah. So I just text Raja and I was like, Hey, my neighbor's a big fan. And he like <laughs> sent her a selfie and was like, thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. you. He's super awesome. nice. Always been super cool to me. Always been super nice to me. So like, I, I don't have one bad thing to say about him. Yeah. yeah. He seems super grounded. And I feel like you do as well, mm -hmm. Haley, you know, and the, the theme of our show today is rising stars. You know, you're 22 years old. I feel like you're very mature for your age. You're grounded. Even though you have all this movement going on in your life, right? You're on the road all the time. Um, mm -hmm. A huge online presence. Um, so I just want to know, you know, how do you stay grounded? I did see that you just built like a dirt track in your backyard. Mm -hmm. You just go racing to let out some pain. <laughs> but yeah, how do you stay so grounded? I mean, I think my life's always been around racing and always around people and racing, but like, I, I love going dirt racing and stuff like that and being around like that dirt racing environment. Like people are super laid back, cool. And like, I enjoy doing that stuff. That's my fun, no pressure racing. Yeah. The NASCAR side is the more pressure side of things. Like you're there to do a job. The dirt side, you hang out, you go drive to the race, uh, you pack up and clean up your cars at night, you power wash everything, get everything prepped and ready for the next day. Like that's, I enjoy that stuff. And that's my kind of like let loose time. Um, but at home, like I don't have much time off, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> that's so fair. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so we've talked a lot today about you as a driver, but I also feel like I've learned about you as a person. And I'm really curious, in addition to being a racer, you also have all of these other passions. You have all mm -hmm. these other things that go on in your life. So me, for example, I have not lost a game of Settlers of Catan in 10 <laughs> months. And all of my friends are really mad at me for it. And every time I win, they sigh. And I also am feeling a lot of pressure because I haven't lost in like 10 months and I just can't start losing now. Yeah. So what is something about you like that? Like what is something that people don't know about you, but is interesting like that? Oh man. And that's the hard part. When you show everything on social media, there's not yeah. much mm -hmm. that like people don't not know about you. Like I feel I, like I'm so open with my life, but also I don't do much besides race. Yeah, like, I, I don't have time to really do anything else. And so like, I love working out, but that's like no secret. <laughs> so, that's yeah. so fair. Yeah. That's so fair. And I feel like I share everything too, but there are little things that like people just wouldn't interact with. Like I'm really into Minesweeper. I play Minesweeper all the time. <laughs> so like, saw this. Just, just, tell this old lady what all these games are. It, what am I okay, missing what here? Minesweeper is the old one where you blow up the bombs on the computer and like there mm. are numbers and you blow up the bombs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm really big into games and that is something that I don't get to post a lot about, even though yeah. I post my whole life. So I was like, mm -hmm. is there something about Haley that she doesn't <laughs> post? I mean, I guess the only thing that not many people like, I'm like a health freak, like okay, super health, okay. like organic everything. I love cooking like every night that we're home. And Chase has it pretty good. I make dinner, homemade every single night. Oh, that's night. so nice. <laughs> oh, my awesome. goodness. Yeah, like I'm just – and I love cooking. I think it comes from my grandparents. That's how my grandparents were growing up, my parents. And I'm like organic health freak everything. Okay. I shop at like farmer's markets. I only buy like fruit if it's organic. Like I keep in mind like I still – when you're traveling on the road, sometimes you don't have the best options. Sometimes Cracker Barrel or cookout oh, yeah. is your best option. So uh, you, you take what you got to do. 
Oh yeah. But when I'm home, like I notice when I, when I leave and go on the road and start eating like food on the road, I'm like, I just feel like I just instantly gain weight. And then I come home and it instantly shed it off. It's like, it's funny to see like how it fluctuates and stuff. Cause when I'm at home, like I eat super clean and like super mm-hmm. health free. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, Oh, if you're sick, like take like these supplements and these vitamins and all this like crazy stuff. <laughs> I, I do love the that. same thing. I- <laughs> Monica. The same boat. Yeah, I love my green juices, all that stuff. And when I'm on the road, I'm like, ah, oh, the media center, all they have is like hamburgers, you know? Yeah. You got to do what oh, you got to do. Yeah. Um, but real quick, before we wrap this up, we ask every guest um, this question. What fuels you and what what motivates you? How do you stay motivated in this career? I think that there's there's not something that really can motivate you. And I think that's something that a lot of people look for is like, Oh, I just need more motivation. I need this. Like motivation comes from within. If you don't want it, no one else is going to want it more. Like no one else is going to help you. No one else is going to motivate you. Like you have to motivate yourself. And so I've always kind of been that way of like, if, if I want to get something done, I'm going to need to do it. Like it's not anyone else is going to do it for me. And so uh, it's just, I think it's something that like I've always always had within me that like I kind of just use and utilize and try to get my work done that I need to yeah it's in your wow. blood I was like I was like I don't even have anything that was so oh, good caffeine, wow. a lot of caffeine okay caffeine <laughs> like there we go. when you start getting chest pains that's when you back it down a little bit <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that was that yeah. was so good wow <laughs> I just I I don't even have a follow-up it was so good thank you so much for joining us it was fantastic I feel like we learned a lot about you and we had a lot of fun it was great yeah thank you so much Haley and best of luck to you this season thank you I appreciate it it was good talking to you guys that was so much fun I really 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 enjoyed talking to Haley and me too and who knew she was so much of a health nut so we got to learn some new things about her Um, which is really cool. I enjoyed that a lot. And we're learning about Minesweeper. I'm going to teach you how to play. (laughs) It's going to be great. It's a very difficult game. Will I get addicted? Uh, Yes. Oh my goodness. Minesweeper was like really big, late 90s, early 2000s on desktops. And it was where you explode the mines and there are all the numbers. I should know all these things. I was was like building log cabins as a kid. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was actually outside playing in the creek. I was in the era before I was in the era before we had phones and we were outside playing in the creek. And you know, sometimes I think about it and I go, I would never do that as an adult because there are snakes in there. (laughs) Right? Like, how how was I not afraid of that? I know. But as a kid, you know, we enjoyed it. I loved play. I I force my kids outside every day. There we go. Exactly. We just got to avoid the snakes. Yeah, we got to stay out of the creeks and and we're fine. So what are you doing this week and weekend heading into Phoenix? Going to Phoenix. Oh, that's exciting. I love Phoenix. Not only is the racing super exciting, but if you have never been, it's, it's one of those moments when you're driving up to the track and you take this long road and then all of a sudden you see the track and the mountains behind it and it's like oh. ah, like that moment literally and I always post it on my Instagram because it to me it's such a cool site um they have Rattlesnake Hill which is a really cool place to watch I was like snakes race. again <laughs> oh, yeah I know. but they they supposedly clear out all of the rattlesnakes the week before but people okay. put tents up there um it's a great place to sit and hang out and watch the race it's awesome i have never been to phoenix and i want to go to phoenix it sounds amazing i almost went last year but i didn't i want to go so badly it's so pretty yeah, yeah you need to check it out yeah and the, the the track is awesome uh even for race fans like their their infield is very fan friendly so you can even walk inside the garage some at some tracks the garages are um you're separated by a piece of glass but here you can literally walk into the garage, check out the the cars, watch the the pit guys work on the the cars. There's tons of driver appearances, not only inside the track but out in the fan zone. There's just there's just so much to do. Oh, that is awesome. Well, yeah. for me, it is officially March, which means it's officially the month that I am going to be a spotter for the first time what? at Circuit of the Americas. Well, so what? I am practicing. So wait, so tell me how this all came about. 
Okay. Well, that's a great question. So one day we were sitting at home and my husband goes, we should spot. And I was like, great <laughs> idea. I'll text somebody. And he said, text Brad Perez, who drives for Alpha Prime Racing, which is owned by Tommy Joe Martins, who is great. I love Tommy Joe. So I messaged Brad and I said, can my husband and I spot for you? And Brad said, as long as Tommy Joe is okay with it, I am okay with it. So I text Tommy Joe and he said, as long as Brad is okay with it, I am okay with it. And I said, you got a spotter then. But so here is the question. Have you ever spotted before? I have not spotted before. So what we're going to do is we are going to go over old spotter radio and we're going to watch footage while listening to old spotter radio. And also Brad is going to prepare for the race on iRacing. So we are going to spot for him on iRacing during That's his cool. preparation sessions. That is awesome. Are you nervous? Yeah, but also <laughs> I like I'm nervous, but also mentally I've been spotting for everyone in my head while they show them on TV. So like I'm I'm spotting for them in my head. So I'm doing that and I so am prepared. nervous, but I also feel like yes, but I also feel like if I spot for somebody once, it's not going to seem that ridiculous when I ask to spot for other people. <laughs> like, You're going to start calling everybody. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? You need a spotter. No, literally, that's what I'm going to do. And if I open <laughs> one door, there will be a million more doors and people won't just roll their eyes at me. I mean, they may, but they have Who less cares? reason to roll their eyes at me and yeah. it will be amazing. And I can't wait to spot for Brad. I adore Brad. He's wonderful. He does so well on road courses and it's just going to be the whole gang out there spotting and driving. It's amazing. You'll have to tell us all about it. So I'll be in Phoenix. Alanis will be prepping for her debut spotting gig in Coda. <laughs> Ooh, how exciting. I cannot believe we actually said that sentence. I can't believe that's a real word. What, real phrase, not word. That's multiple words mm -hmm. stringed together. Wow. What an exciting week. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you so much, Haley. It was wonderful to have Haley. And thank you all for listening. We appreciate you so much. You can find me and Monica online. I'm at Alanis in my middle initial King on everything except for YouTube. There I am Alanis King. Monica, where can we find you? Just at Monica Palumbo. Check it out. Ooh. I'm more of an Instagrammer than, you know, there we I, go. I'm an older lady, so I haven't learned the TikTok ways yet, but I'll get there. Oh, I love Monica's Instagram. I like everything she posts. It's amazing. So go check her out and we will see y'all around. Thanks for Thanks listening. Guys. Bye.